Good morning, everybody. It's great to have you here today. And this is the first of our uh, programs. Uh, OK, with that, I'm going to go ahead and invite the bell, and we'll get started. And the bell separates us from the time before our meditation and, and our meditation period. It makes a divider for us and serves as a reminder to begin the process of relaxing and easing into meditation. And so let's all do that uh, by first arranging our our bodies. I like to sit up straight. And I even like to uh, do some of this, sort of stretching through my, through my hands and, and uh, even some very slight twists to relax. It doesn't matter if you've meditated all your life or you've never meditated. We're all the same today. No difference. Uh, I'll make some suggestions. If you're sitting in a chair, uh, you may want to sit toward the front of the chair so your feet are flat on the ground. That'll give you the most support for your, uh, your posture. Continuing to just relax into a posture in a seated position that is comfortable for you. You can, I like to do this, my hands get tight and I, and, uh, I like to, I like to pull my fingers and I like to take my arms like this and kind of grab at the elbows and pull to get a little stretch in your shoulders. I find is good for me, but whatever works for you is fine. And we begin the process of relaxing our faces. We, we keep a lot of tension in our faces. And so uh, I like to, it looks silly, but I keep a lot of tension in my jaw. And so uh, I think a lot of people do. So you can do that and open your eyes wide and revolve your neck also. I keep a lot of tension in my neck. I can be a really tense person. And I have to work very hard to uh, get rid of that, relax that, I get rid of it, relax it. And so uh, beginning to relax our eyes, I close them and open them. And now we begin to breathe. With your hands, you could, uh, do whatever is comfortable. You could rest them on your knees, your palms on your knees. Softly with our hands, we're always trying to uh, be soft and gentle with them during meditation. You don't want to grip them tight. If you're familiar with a meditative mudra, which is uh, uh, this formation, your thumbs lightly touching, you can, you can do that. Whatever is comfortable. Meditation can be done even lying down. Many, many different ways. And as we begin to breathe, I like to uh, rest the tip of my tongue behind my upper teeth. That's sort of the resting place for it. Tip of your tongue behind your upper teeth. And you can close your eyes if you want, or you can keep them open. I tend to 
get uh, allow my lids to become heavy, heavy lids, heavy eyelids, so that there is a, a bit of visibility open to me downwards. And we breathe. In and out. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Go ahead and take some breaths on your own. And notice what's going on with you today. Whatever it is, perfectly fine. And this one thing we're doing, this breathing, Think about it. If we were suddenly 50 feet below the water surface in the ocean without a scuba tank, we were given the choice of $100 million for getting to the surface. I guess is we would take our breath. Without our breath, we don't have anything. We are poor indeed. It is the most common form of wealth that we all share. And it's where we begin today. This basic, basic, but incredibly complex activity that like so much of our wealth, So much of our merit we take for granted the vast majority of the time. It would take 30 minutes, one forty eighth of our day to feel gratitude and focus on this most basic form of wealth, our breath, and the relaxation of our body again, without which we are poor indeed. And we consider that we are deserving, we are worthy 
of this life and this breath. It isn't an accident that we have these things, body and breath. We are deserving of our lives. We are even entitled to our lives. If there is anything to which we are entitled, it is our lives. You may have thoughts arising, and that is as it should be. And just as with our body and with our breath, we have our thoughts. Another source of incredible wealth. If we had no thoughts, we would be poor indeed. Body, breath, and thought. Who could imagine that these are the very foundations of our wealth? But they are. And we are deserving of all three, body, breath, thought. Now, perhaps let's begin to expand our field of view, our field of thought. We are all sitting somewhere. We are sheltered. I am in my office. It is a wonderful place for me and my colleagues and our clients to be together and to work. And we are lucky to have that shelter. In the winter, it protects us from the cold. When it's raining, it protects us. Right now, in the very, very early summer heat that has come to us, it is providing us with a cool place, a comfortable place. And wherever you are, whether that is in your work or in your home, you too are wealthy indeed. There are many people who do not have shelter. On the way in this morning, there was a man in a wheelchair asking for money at the corner at the freeway and I passed him on the way here, another human being, but one who clearly lacks shelter. And as with our body and our breath and our thoughts, we are deserving and we merit shelter. 
that has come to us and is provided to us by the universe. We are worthy of it. In the case of our homes, if we own our homes, when we purchased our homes, it may be that we didn't even have enough money to purchase them. And others loaned us that money. Others deemed us to be worthy of a loan. And our shelters, our homes, our offices have furnishings in them. And those furnishings have come to us also through the universe. They have been made and assembled by people we do not know who and we will never meet. people who made them in factories in other parts of the world, other parts of the country. And yet they have come to us. And provide comfort to us. And as we think about those people, strangers, myriad strangers, countless strangers, we might begin also to think about those who are closer to us, who we do know, other forms of wealth. Maybe we have living with us companion animals, pets, we call them. Incredible, loyal sources of wealth to us. Almost always there for us when we need them. We might think of our family. Those people who are close to us because of our births. Or because we have chosen them to join our families. Extraordinary resources. And we are deserving. And we are worthy of them. Our friends. Those who we have met during our precious lives and taken a liking to as they have taken a liking to us. and become among our most important sources of wealth. The people who we often lean on and need, who level with us and tell us the truth when we need to hear it. And those with whom we simply enjoy and spending time with our friends.
our communities. Large group of people with whom we share interests, values, ideals, who simply through our association with them, we are given the benefit of the doubt. and accorded generosity and activity company. We even consider the incredible wealth that has come to us from those who are no longer with us, those who have passed those we have known, who have given us love and care. To those who have done things unknown to us, strangers to us, those who have invented things that have made our lives better, discovered theories upon which we all rely for knowledge and wisdom. The vast amount of wealth that comes to us from those who are no longer living, it is myriad, it is countless. And yet here we are the beneficiaries of all of that. Those of us who are still in our working lives, we are grateful for our livelihoods, the opportunity to work, to earn, to save, to advance, there are times we take our livelihoods for granted, but we should not. They are an incredible source of wealth to all of us. For those of us who are retired, our livelihoods have enabled us to reach retirement. The service that we have rendered to others, the payments that they have made to us for those services have truly, truly helped our lives just as we have helped their lives. And finally, we come to our financial wealth itself. Maybe it's counted in the tens of thousands of dollars. Maybe it's counted in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Maybe in the millions, maybe even in the tens of millions. Whatever it is, We are deserving of it. We are worthy. And our only proper response to this incredible list that we have gone through this morning, beginning with our breath, is gratitude. 
to be grateful because it did not have to be this way. It could have been another way. From our breath, to our thoughts, our shelter, our furnishings, our companions, human and otherwise, family, friends, community, strangers living and dead, our livelihoods, and the very accounts that we carry and own and maintain and that provide safety and freedom our only appropriate response is gratitude for this extraordinary abundance And so I invite everyone to try to make this type of realization uh, a regular part of our thinking, a regular part of uh, our realization. It may already be, but we can never do it too much. And when we are thinking that we are poor, when we are worried that we don't have enough, and we may not, when we are anxious that it could all go away, and it could. I invite everyone to remind themselves to begin with your breath. Sit down. Relax. And begin with an appreciation for these very, very basic elements. and gradually expand your realization to the point that in a relatively short amount of time, you can come to see how truly, truly rich you are and how deserving and worthy you are of this merit. The universe has made that decision to endow you with this wealth. And the proper response is gratitude in whatever way you see fit. And there is no one way to express gratitude. Even the thought, the grateful thought can be enough. I'm gonna invite the bell now and we'll do a couple of minutes of breathing and then I'll invite the bell again to close the session.
Thank you all very much. I wish you a wonderful day.